Hey guys, Balkan Arctic here and in this video I'm going to be talking to you about 6D BIM. And no, it's got nothing to do with this. I'm going to be going over every single dimension up to 6D and I'm going to explain what, what each one brings to the table. But before I get started, I would just like to ask you to like this video, it helps me out a lot and if you haven't already, I suggest you subscribe because I make videos like this every day. So I'm going to be starting from something that isn't BIM at all and that's 3D. 3D basically means you have three axes that you're working in. You have your X, Y and Z and basically you create all of your geometry within these axes. Now this is one step further from just traditional 2D drafting and it brings a lot more stuff to you. So you can do some realistic images of your building so you can see how your building looks like in space and in 3D and you can do some basic analysis like shadow analysis for example. Now for 3D you can use a lot of software, you can use SketchUp, 3ds Max, AutoCAD, Rhinoceros etc. Then we get to 4D BIM and this is where BIM actually begins. Now fourth dimension brings data sets and these data sets combine the graphical with non-graphical information and what this basically means is when you have some 3D object, for example a floor slab, this isn't just dead 3D graphical information but it also carries some non-graphical information like the number of layers and for example the area and the volume of these layers and the material and material carries with it some structural information as well as insulation properties, thermal information, maybe color and appearance properties and much much more. Now this allows for much more complex analysis like the building's thermal efficiency or structural analysis and it also makes the process of calculating quantities infinitely more easier because the computer can actually calculate on its own for example how many bathroom tiles you need in your whole building or how much rebar you need to reinforce your concrete and it also allows engineers to work together a lot easier because they're all working on one centralized cloud-based BIM model. All engineers, architects, civil engineers, experts in mechanical or electrical equipment can all work on this model and communicate a lot easier. And to be working in BIM or 4D BIM, you really need to use software like Revit or ArchiCAD. Now I've heard there is some plugins for SketchUp that supposedly turn SketchUp into a BIM software, but I'm not that sure about that. Okay, now it's time for the 5D BIM. And the fifth dimension brings to the table something that makes the world go round. And no, I'm not talking about love, I'm talking about money, of course. Now, in 95% of any new construction, the only thing that is important is how much it costs to build and how much can you sell it for afterwards. And adding a monetary dimension to your workflow can make you a lot more appealing to your future clients. Now cost estimation is a very difficult and risky process because people are quite emotional about their hard-earned cash. So if you're using traditional methods of cost estimation where you kind of determine the cost of the building after you finish designing, well then your workflow is really inefficient. 5D BIM actually allows you to make informed decisions during the design process and the cost estimation will automatically update as you make changes to your design. Now this is great if you have to make a couple of design options and then you will immediately have your cost estimations and then you can show it to your client so he can perhaps make the final decision. Okay, 6D BIM. This unleashes the full potential of BIM and the sixth dimension is actually time. Now this totally changes the focus from the capital cost of the building to the value of the building over its whole lifespan. Let's say you have to choose between a regular light bulb and an LED light bulb. When just looking at the capital costs, the regular light bulb will make a lot more sense. But if you look at everything over time and you consider the operational cost as well as the lifespan, well then the LED light bulb suddenly becomes the better and cheaper option. And if you track the building over time, you can actually schedule maintenance 
and installation dates as well as optimum operation and much more for all the elements that go into the building. You can even schedule possible renovations later on in the building's life cycle during the initial phase of design. Now, this doesn't only allow you to make informed decisions during the design process, it actually allows the end user to know exactly when will he have some maintenance or some replacements, so no unexpected costs will pop up. Now, this all sounds great and it's only half the story. The other half of the story is with 6D BIM you can actually track over time everything that happens in this building over the whole lifespan. So you know when will the materials kind of start falling apart and they need replacing and all the maintenance intervals as well as perhaps energy usage of the building. And then you can use all of this data that all of your buildings that you have already created in 6D BIM and you can use all this data and create informed decisions for your future projects. But you tell me in the comment section below, is there anything left out? Should we add something to have perhaps 7D BIM? And do you even use BIM? Do you even BIM? And which software do you use for BIM? Okay, so that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like and share this video and I will see you tomorrow.